Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Umidigi F3S. This is another budget-oriented smartphone, uh, which is priced at around 180 bucks. It's fully unlocked, supports 4G LTE, has two SIM card slots in fact, uh, but one of the slots you can also use as a micro SD slot to expand on the 128 gigs of built-in storage. Now for the specs you are getting, I would say, moderate performance, including 6 gigs of RAM, and it's powered by the octa-core Unisoc T6 10 processor. We have seen used in a ton of other affordable devices, uh, including Android tablets, such as this 10.1 inch Kinstone tablet we checked out just a while back. It's about comparable to something in the Snapdragon 600 to 700 line. Before we dive in deeper though, there's a couple of things I do have to point out, which is Umidigi, this brand, they've been pumping out quite a few smartphones recently, which if you look a little closer, seem to be mostly rehashed versions of one another. So they're kind of going down the same route as Xiaomi, which is just making small, maybe tweaks, such as some versions having three camera lenses, some having two. But a lot of these phones, including the F3S or the a13 Pro are all powered by the exact same chipset, that Unisoc T610. So fundamentally, you're not getting a vastly different experience. If you've seen one of their recent phones, you probably get a good idea of what their other models are currently like. Uh, they all borrow very similar design traits. They all mostly have a 6.7 inch HD plus display. Of course, as a smartphone enthusiast, I would definitely like them to have more bigger differences among their phones. But regardless, the F3S, even in a vacuum, I think still remains as overall a decent, attractively priced uh, budget Android phone. Uh, we do have a polycarbonate build, so there's no, let's say, metal or glass on the finish here, but still feels very solid in the hand, and the finish is matte, so it doesn't really attract fingerprints, shimmers across the light, and overall definitely looks more expensive than the price would imply, although this camera module definitely will remind you of some of the latest iPhones. With that being said, the overall shell here still has rounded corners, so it's not quite as sharp on the edges. This is pretty comfortable to hold, despite packing a really large 5,150 milliamp hour capacity battery, which coupled with the aforementioned HD plus resolution screen, so yes, that's 720p, a little bit higher than that, as opposed to full HD, and it is a standard 60 hertz refresh rate. But all of that means you are getting incredible battery life on this phone, in fact, well over 8 to 10 hours of screen on time and that means in standby mode just using it very sporadically for checking out social media watching back a youtube video here and there i could use this phone easily for three days in standby, it will last you well over a week, which is pretty hard to find these days. It almost reminds me of Nokia phones back in the day, and that is just how long-lasting this battery is. We do have USB Type-C for charging at the bottom, however, it is just 10 watt charging speed. So it takes actually around two hours, two and a half hours to fully top up this giant battery, but it is what it is. There's a single speaker on there. Left hand spine houses a programmable multifunction key where you can use different commands, whether it's long holding, single tapping, or double tapping to trigger different programs that you can set in the app, uh, which is a feature that's borrowed from some of their rugged phones, which I do appreciate. I think it's a very neat idea and more phones should incorporate it. There's a aforementioned SIM card slot. And yes, this phone still retains the standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Always great to see. Now, speaking of cameras on here, this is one of their more capable arrays on their current line of phones. It includes a primary 48 megapixel lens from Sony, 8 megapixel ultra wide 120 degree lens, coupled by a 5 megapixel macro lens for close up shots and a dual tone LED flash. There is a little bit of a bump though because of this design, again, kind of inspired by the iPhone. However, they do give you a included TPU soft carrying case, silicon in the box as a freebie, which makes it a little bit more flat so it doesn't wobble quite as much. Last but not least, on the right-hand spine, you find access to a volume rocker, as well as a fingerprint scanner baked into the power key, which is actually very sensitive and fast in my testing so far. Uh, so it is quite responsive and easy to trigger, working as expected. Now on the front here, again, that 6.7 inch display, it's an IPS fully laminated screen, and overall has modest bezels, maybe not the smallest by today's standards, but certainly not bad, and houses a teardrop notch on the top, which is containing the 16 megapixel selfie cam. The screen is completely flat, so there's no curves that you can get accidental touches with. I know a lot of folks will prefer something like this, and for the most part, it is a very vibrant and beautiful looking screen, 
for an IPS LCD panel. If anything though, I would say the minimum brightness level can be a little bit dimmer because right now, even at this min setting, if I'm in bed, I still find the screen to be a little bit on the bright side. Uh, at the maximum mode, it is mostly visible even if you're outdoors, although admittedly there can be a little bit of glare sometimes uh, that is not going to be quite as easy to see as on flagship phones which may have an OLED or AMOLED screen. Taking a closer look at the software, we have a mostly vanilla and unsolicited version of Android 11 out of the box. Umidigi have always been pretty good in terms of never giving you too much bloatware, and that's the case here. Aside from the Google apps, you won't find a trace of anything extra. There is an FM radio and a basic utility tools like a sound recorder, but that's it. And the 128 gigs of storage are pretty much left for you to install the apps that you actually want. Otherwise, in settings, this is where you can find the aforementioned controls for the smart key. So right now we have it programmed where a long hold can trigger the flashlight, but you can easily change this to another command, including an SOS contact when you are uh, needing to contact help, and other programs can also be launched just by using that key. There is the drag down gesture to bring up the shortcuts uh, up top, which is good because it is a very tall phone. This makes it a little easier to hit some of those controls. Now, last but not least, I will mention that as far as other connectivity options are concerned, yes, this phone does come with NFC, so you can use it for contactless mobile payment, has the typical Bluetooth, GPS, though it doesn't come with wireless charging, but again, pretty expected at this price. So jumping into the camera performance next, I would say on budget phones, it's never been a area of particular strength, but this is serviceable and about average with other devices in this price range. You can record video up to full HD, but no 4K at the moment. And as far as special controls are concerned, we do have HDR on here, which can definitely boost the contrast and uh, the saturation. There's also a built-in QR code scanner and under the additional settings, this is where you can find the macro lens mode. Uh, so over here, this is a fixed focus lens, but you're able to get a lot closer to your subjects. Still is a fun one to play around with even if it may not be the most practical one that you'll always use but it is there if you need it now, otherwise to trigger the wide angle panorama lens all you need to do is tap on this icon there and that instantly jumps between the wide angle lens which as you can see there definitely gets you more within that one frame of shot uh, and still giving you a very capable experience for sharing on social media and just preserving some of those memories that you are recording can still look pretty vibrant as long as you have a bit of light in the background. So here's an example of that wide angle lens. The same shot, if I use the primary lens, you can see the difference between the two. Uh, and again, getting you still plenty of detail because of that 48 megapixel sensor. The general performance has also been quite good with the six gigabytes of RAM, even jumping between a few browser tabs and apps in the background. I was still able to typically have a little bit of space left over. Things felt smooth thanks to again that Unisoc T 610 processor and hardly any hints of lag or delay, which is not too surprising considering that I found the Snapdragon 660 and 665 to both be very capable in terms of this general navigation and this thing should be a little bit faster even than those chips browser here, again, very quick to load. Let's try out something like The Verge, a pretty complex page and see how quickly it loads. And you can see there that it is very fast. Uh, that is also one of the benefits of having this uh, plastic unibody material is the re reception quality has generally been quite good, always getting me nearly three bars, if not max, in terms of Wi-Fi supporting dual band, uh, 2.4G and 5G, and otherwise pretty fast loading speeds. Again, for reading back articles, things still feel quite zippy and responsive. Responsive. Now you can see here that with this again almost 21 by 9 aspect ratio screen it just feels very wide but typically if you're holding your phone like this especially going through social media feeds uh, things do look quite good because of the tall length and you end up being able to see a bit more. Here's a demo of what it's like watching back YouTube videos and the speaker quality of the F3S. Some of the takeaways here being that, again, the screen I think is better performing than you would think because of the large display and the widescreen aspect ratio. Although, admittedly, as you're zooming into things, you get a little bit more cropping if your content isn't optimized for a super widescreen view. But still, things are looking quite good. Speaker quality, though, is just so-so. I mean, it's a, definitely not as good as a stereo set and can be 
muffled up if you put your hand there. I also find that when you are cranking up the volume after about 80%, the jump between that and 85% seems to be a pretty big leap in terms of the decibels. So it's not quite as smooth there uh, for some reason, but overall it still is loud enough and you won't have any issues in terms of hearing it. When it comes to doing a bit of gaming, again the Unisoc T610 also handles itself well enough. It may not have the most powerful GPU in the world, but for lighter games as well as mid-tier games, there's certainly no issues here. It's a chip that on this phone also doesn't exhibit any thermal throttling, so performance is pretty consistent and the phone remains cool in terms of temperatures as well. Again, similar to other mid-tier phones in say the Helio G80 or the Snapdragon 600 to 700 line, you're still getting very acceptable performance here for loading up pretty much any game that you would want from the Play Store, can be all installed without any issues. And as far as the fundamentals are concerned, again, making phone calls, no issues here at all when it comes to reception quality. Microphone also sounded loud and clean, picked up my voice really without any problems at all, even in slightly more challenging outdoor environments. I think that's also by nature of having the mic a little closer to your mouth because of the longer shape of this particular phone. So again, overall, pretty stable performance, again, helped by the components that they've chosen here. Here. lighter games, everything will still load back and play without any issues. You can even play back, let's say, Asphalt, PUBG, more graphically demanding titles as well if you just lower the settings a little bit, but everything can still play back really without any problems. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Umidigi F3S. And as aforementioned, I think this is still a pretty solid budget contender. You're also getting really long battery life coupled with a fairly elegant looking design. You can check out more details in the links down below. Again, may not be the flashiest in terms of feature set, but works well enough. That's been the Umidigi F3S.